Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Li Peng, professor and the director of the Great Institute for Taiwan Studies of Xiamen University. Xiamen University faces Taiwan across the Taiwan Strait. My institute is the first funding institution uh, specialized in Taiwan studies in mainland China. And uh, right now is the biggest Taiwan research institution among Chinese universities. It's my great honor to have this opportunity to attend this very important event. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the U.S. interference in Taiwan question and uh, mainland China's policy toward uh, peaceful reunification in the new era. Uh, we all know that Taiwan is a part of China. This is an indisputable fact. And the Taiwan question is China's internal affairs. But from the beginning of the Taiwan question, since late of 1940s, the United States has been trying to interfere in the settlement of this issue. The current example is on August the 2nd, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, paid an official visit to Taiwan, which violated the three U.S.-China joint communiques and challenged the One China Principle. Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan led to a new round of crisis in the Taiwan Strait. You all saw that in order to safeguard the national sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity, the Chinese government had to um, take very strong political, uh, military, uh, diplomatic, and economic countermeasures. On August 10th, the Chinese government released a new white paper named The Taiwan Question and the China's Reunification in the New Era. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the release of the white paper itself has nothing to do with um, Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, uh, but the timing of the release is related to the current events and the, the uh, current situation. Uh, we all know that in the year of 1993 and uh, in the year of, 90, uh, of, 20, uh, of 2000, uh, the Chinese government released two white papers. Uh, one was uh, the Taiwan question and the uh, relocation of China in August 1993, and uh, the other was the um, One China Principle and uh, the Taiwan issue in February 2000. Now, 22 years passed, the international situation, the cross-strait relations, and the Taiwan's domestic situation has undergone great changes. Also, many China's policy toward Taiwan also have many new developments. You can see uh, in today's China, the confidence of Chinese people to resolve the Taiwan question uh, has greatly increased. And they have very high expectations for the early complete reunification. So it's necessary for the party, CPC, and the Chinese government to demonstrate to the people that they have confidence to achieve reunification. They have to demonstrate to the people the firm determination to oppose any Taiwan independent uh, independence and, and motivations and any foreign interference. Also, uh, with the changes in the island, in Taiwan, uh, we need to articulate the bright future after a peaceful reunification to the people in Taiwan, to the Taiwanese people, and tell them the extreme danger of Taiwan independence separatist activities taken by DPP authorities and supported by some forces in the United States. Also, Mm, the international community hopes to fully understand the Chinese government's proposition to resolve the Taiwan question uh, in the new era. These are the main considerations for the Chinese government 
to release the new white paper at this time. So in the white paper, the Chinese government reiterated that achieving reunification by peaceful means is the first choice. And the use of force would be the last resort, taken only under compelling circumstances. So the formulation of first choice and the last resort means that China still sticks to the principle of peaceful reunification. China wants to try our best to maintain peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. But now the problem is the collusion between Taiwan independent separatist forces, such as uh, DPP authorities, and uh, the external forces, uh, especially the United States, has become the biggest threat to the peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. And the external forces, especially the United States, are trying to play the so-called Taiwan card, Taiwan card to undermine China's development, to obstruct the reunification and the rejuvenation courses of China. Uh, the United States government, including Biden administration, have stated many times that uh, they do not support Taiwan independence and uh, they remain committed to the one China policy, but their actions contradict their words. We can see they incite separatist forces in Taiwan to create tension and turmoil in the cross-strait relations. They send high-ranking government officials and uh, encourage Congress members to visit Taiwan frequently. They sell advanced weapons to Taiwan almost every year. They often support Taiwan to join the international organizations requires the sovereign um, state status, etc. So the white paper warns that Quote, we will not renounce the youth force, and uh, we reserve the option of taking all necessary measures. So that, that's because China have to prepare for the worst. China will never tolerate any productive activities across the red line, no matter taken by Taiwan independent forces, by Taiwan authorities, or by foreign interference forces, such as the United States government. So I, I believe Taiwan authorities are trying to rely on external forces, will achieve nothing for Taiwan separatists. Taiwan will never be independent. Also, the United States are trying to use Taiwan to contain China's, uh, China's rise or China's development is doomed to fail. So th this is what I want to share with you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience.